So let's talk a little bit about Dreampore. Um, Dreampore is a French uh, protein nanopore protein sequencing uh, startup uh, based in, in Paris. Um, I last looked at them in 2021. Uh, so this might be another company where we could go back and figure out what's happened or if the company still exists. I haven't heard anything about them publicly um, since then. Uh, at that point they'd raised 600,000 euros and they had something in the region of five employees uh, so it's a fairly small small company um, and at that point I couldn't really find a patent uh, publicly uh, available um, but what there was was there was a, a nature paper um, on, on protein sequencing um, and uh, that paper showed uh, I think small peptides seven eight base pair uh, amino acid peptides um, going through nanopore um, and varying in a single position and I think it was always the terminal position um, that they were using alpha hemolysin, which was the nanopore that was uh, used by Hagen Bailey's lab um, in the, the approach that was the, there was a publication that showed with a cyclodextrin inside the pore, uh, you could see single base um, single bases would DNA bases would give off a, a different signal. So it's a well known pore, um, and they show that with a um, uh, this polyarginine region on the peptide they can get it to stick to the pore for long enough that they can de detect single base changes um, and single amino acid changes and they do show single amino acid changes um, but if you look at the full range of amino acids it's not quite as well um, the, 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 the amino acids are not very well uh, differentiated um, the cool thing was actually the raw data seems to be available for this so you could go back and kind of have a look at it um, uh, and see what's uh, going on the blockages seem to vary um, by about 10 picoamps um, which is typical for, for a protein nanopore but in the case of amino acids you're trying to cram or like 20 different kinds of amino acids into these this very small peak 10 pico region it's not like dna sequencing where you've only got four um, and it's not kind of clear what will happen you know when you're looking at adjacent amino acids do you look at two or three um, uh, positions and as i mentioned in the the blog post conservatively I'd say you'd be getting signal from three positions so that's like 8,000 possible combinations um, which would give you 0 0.001 picoamp um, between each um, amino acid if they're all evenly distributed and you've got like a picoamp of noise on this signal as well so it, it it feels like a really hard problem um, on top of that they haven't really discussed how you would um, slow down the translocation of the proteins sufficiently you've got this sticking but that's um, that's not great and they don't really discuss how you deal with contributions from adjacent bases um, there has been at work from other groups which has kind of showed that maybe you can show uh, slow down the translocation uh, but they don't have that IP so you need to see um, they, they need to describe some method of, of slowing down uh, the translocation of the proteins and dealing with different charge distributions on proteins or changing the charge distribution um, all sorts of problems um, that you kind of want to find solutions to but it's still it's interesting um, early work so that's it if you want to hear a bit more about um, uh, Dreampore um, go read my Substack. perhaps there'll be an update post shortly as well I'll go and see what I can find now